Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran and in today's video we'll be doing a Subtle to Rogue PvP guide for the patch 8.1 Season 2. In this video I'll try to give you guys as much information as I can on the spec of subtlety from stats, talents, rotations, macros and try to give you guys as much information and help as I can so you guys can pick up your Subtle to Rogue and start doing battlegrounds as well as arenas with it. Subtle to Rogue is a powerful spec in Battle for Azeroth in the right hands. Some of the advantages of subtlety is great crowd control on multiple different enemies, awesome mobility, and exceptionally powerful burst. What a subtlety lacks at is sustained damage and it's moderately squishy, so when you get stunned up by a paladin with wings, you might want to trink it and run. Let's get into subtlety and what is new with the spec as of Season 2, as of BFA Patch 8.1. First of all, let's talk about stats and gearing for subtle rogues. Your best stat that you want to look out for is agility. The more agility you can get from your gear, the better. So certain trinkets are going to affect how much agility you have. Next best stat is going to be mastery. As subtle rogues, we'll be trying to sink as many finishers into our burst, and mastery directly increases the damage of our finishers. So mastery is going to be your best stat. After your mastery, critical strike and versatility are fairly equal to one another, so stacking either one of those or a fair amount of both of them is going to be preferable. Your worst stat is haste, you want to try to avoid haste as best as possible, but if you get some haste in your gear, like let's say you get boots with mostly mastery and a little bit of haste, that haste is going to be fine. When you start to see a character close to about a thousand points of haste, this way you might want to start to reshuffle some of your gear to drop your haste back down to about 500-400 points. For your enchants, as a subtle rig, you want to go for mastery enchants on both of your rings. Your main hand weapon is going to be masterful navigation and your off hand weapon is either going to be deadly navigation for a crit heavy playstyle or versatile navigation, whichever one you choose. Now let's talk a bit about trinkets for subtlety and these trinkets are going to depend whether you are there to do damage of subtlety or whether you are there to simply output crowd control. So as a subtle rogue, if you're there to do the damage, you'll want to get yourself a badge trinket which will have a blue icon for it. This trinket will increase your agility by an insane amount for a short moment every 2 minutes on use. Using this trinket to deal damage is going to be the best damage output for you as a subtlety. Outside of that, having a proc trinket with some agility on it is also handy. However, if you're playing for a CC heavy playstyle, you want to drop your badge for a Maledict. If you're there just to get some crowd control and you're not there to do damage, then the Maledict Trinket will allow you to deal free shadow damage to the enemy while also necroticing out their health. So if you're able to get yourself a Maledict Trinket and you're there mostly just for CC heavy playstyle, then a Maledict will be a better choice than the badge. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the traits you will need as a subtle to rogue. Picking up the trait of first dance is going to be very crucial and important to the playstyle of subtlety, as this trait gives you extra haste which is nice, but mostly that extra common point generation is going to change your playstyle rotationally, so you'll want to at least pick up one of these traits. The next trait you want to snag is Blade in the Shadows. Not for the damage aspect, but the fact that it reduces the cost of your Shadow Strike. It only reduces it by 2, but in the end, this trait ends up playing really nicely for PvP as it gives you a little bit of that extra sliver of energy every time you Shadow Strike the enemy. Outside of that, Battlefield Focus is going to be your best trait that improves your damage directly. Then we have Knight's Vengeance, which increases the damage of your Eviscerates. And finally, Inevitability will extend the duration of your Symbols of Death, letting you get a lot more damage value out of your Symbols of Death. Now, let's talk about Talents for Subtlety. There's going to be two builds that I will cover in this video, and you guys can choose whichever build you want to run. Both of them are a lot of fun and have a slightly different playstyle, but we're going to start with the original build. The original build is going to consist of Fine Weakness in order to let you bypass 40% of enemy's armor when you burst, Subterfuge for longer duration of your Shadow Dances, Mark for Death for extra common point generation, Elucidus for extra defensive value, Prey in the weak for extra damage increase since you'll be stunning enemies a lot anyway, Dark Shadow for the damage output, and Master Shadows for energy regen. 
Now the next build is gonna be more dancey build. So we're just gonna call it a dance build. We're gonna go for Night Stalker and develop in shadows and that's all we need to change this build heavily plays to the first dance playstyle offering you extra common points so we're gonna go for fine rictus as per usual but instead of subterfuge we're gonna go for night stalker subterfuge extends the duration of your dance but instead of having longer dances we're simply gonna get more dances we're gonna go for night stalker for 12 percent damage increase instead of dark shadow 15 in pvp damage increase so three percent damage decrease but Enveloping Shadows will give us an extra charge of Shadow Dance and faster Shadow Dance recovery with a passive of Deepening Shadows. For every common point that we spend into a finisher, we're going to reduce the cooldown of Shadow Dance by an extra second, putting it up to 2.5 seconds per common point spend. That means we get far more dance charges overall. This playstyle can give you more on demand CC, more on demand burst, and it plays out with low energy regen, but a lot of easy comp point generation for a 3% damage loss. That's a different playstyle. Some of you guys might like it. It is definitely worth trying it out at the very least. Now for the honor talents, you'll go with Gladiator's Medallion unless you're a human. Humans can run with Relentless if you decide to play that type of playstyle, mostly within arenas. But if you're not sure, Gladiator's Medallion ends up being the best choice. Cold Blood is necessary for subtlety to have increased damage as this can be weaved into your burst rotation. Smoke Bomb is going to be amazing when you're trying to drop an LOS on an enemy whether you're trying to kill one in arena away from healers so they can't heal the kill target or in a battle gun when you're trying to burst down the fly carrier without healers trying to intervene. Then Shadowy Duel is going to be another great option. It is very difficult to play with as it has a very high cost, pretty long cooldown, and the ability itself can be used in multiple ways. Either one, to drop a target into Shadowy Duel as an extra layer of CC after, let's say, blinding an enemy, sapping them, stunning them, then sending them into a Shadowy Duel. Then you can combo CC off of that. Or taking an enemy that needs to be killed into Shadowy Duel using your Symbols of Death to give you back the energy needed and during Shadowy Duel you can use all of your stealth based abilities to try to burst the target down while they're away from the sight of a healer. Outside of that, here are your other options. Dagger in the Dark, Maneuverability, and Death from Above. The general play style for a subtle to rogue is to get common points, stun the enemy down, make sure you generate common points to maintain Nightblade on the enemy as it has the damage aspect, healing reduction and extra shadow damage on top of it and try to burn as many eviscerates into your enemy. The subtlety play style outside of your burst with shadow dances is simply just to backstab the enemy and maintain Nightblade and eviscerate if you have full common points. Subtlety doesn't really deal a lot of damage outside of dances so this part is not too important for PvP. Just try to maintain Nightblade on the enemy and try to maintain your energy as high as you can for the moments when you're bursting someone down. A very basic opener for Subtle to Rogue that can be used in almost all situations to try to deal damage while stun locking the enemy. This is going to be the least burst your opener shouldn't be combined with a trinket. Your rotation is going to be Cheap Shot the enemy, Shadow Strike, Nightblade. Dance symbols, Shadow Strike, full common points into a kidney, then Shadow Strike the enemy twice, and then Eviscerate. If you want to go for a bursty setup, you'll open on the enemy with a Mark for Death kidney, followed by a Shadow Strike into a Nightblade. Dance with symbols, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, Shadow Strike, Cheap Shot, Eviscerate, and you continue on with a Shadow Strike to follow. Then there is this more ballsy setup that I like to use in Battlegrounds, especially if enemies aren't expecting a rogue out of nowhere. You open up with a Shadow Strike on the enemy, Nightblade, Shadow Strike, so you have full common points, Dance, Symbols, Cheap Shot, Eviscerate, Mark for Death, Eviscerate, follow that up with a Shadow Strike, Cheap Shot on the enemy, Eviscerate, then as your Cheap Shot is about to end, Dance, Cheap Shot the enemy again, into an Eviscerate, and then Shadow Strike as a finish. The problem with this opener is it's ballsy, but it only works as long as the enemy doesn't expect Rogue. So if you're in a battleground and you notice somebody who's not that great at the game, you can execute this burst to get the most value. Or maybe on a healer that can stop your opener, like a druid or a monk. Because let's say if a druid bashes you and you're stunned in the middle of the enemy team, that's just simply going to put you in a very vulnerable position. 
Now I want to show you a couple openers with the dancing build. So we have triple stack of dance, we have Night Stalker for the damage increase, and this opener will involve you to use your shadow dances far more often, but it could result in a much easier playstyle and rotation. This opener is going to start with a Mark for Death Kidney Shot into a Dance Shadow Strike Nightblade, Symbols of Death into a Double Shadow Strike Eviscerate, Dance into a Cheap Shot Eviscerate, Cheap Shot to follow off of that stun into a Dance Eviscerate, Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate. The next opener is going to be more of a battleground opener like the other one we talked about where the enemy doesn't expect a rogue and this one is a little bit quicker with the dance build in order to get you guys going. You're going to open up on the enemy with a shadow strike into a night blade. Then you're going to go for a dance, symbols, cheap shot, eviscerate, mark for death, eviscerate, shadow strike, cheap shot, eviscerate with a dance cheap shot eviscerate to follow and then you continue singing shadow strikes and eviscerates when you had full common points afterwards most of the macros that i'm using in this video are going to be very similar to my assassination rogue pvp guide but most of the macros consist of focus macro like for example this focus blind macro Slash cast, bracket, add focus, close bracket, space, ability name. And this way I'm able to set a target to focus so I can have a main target that's a priority that I want to focus on. Like let's say a crab is going to be in red. This other crab is going to be in blue. I want to focus all my attention on the red crab while keeping the blue crab in my focus. This way I don't have to change my target at all. All I have to do is press the key bind and the focus target is going to get hit with a blind. This way we can build off off of that macro for subtlety and add other CC based abilities. A small adjustment to that macro will give us focus cheap shot. This way if you have dance available and you need to peel off an enemy on focus with a cheap shot, you can. Expanding further on this macro, we can create a kidney shot macro and if you have common points and you need to CC a target that's a set focus, you can CC the target without having to change target at all. You still have the X target or the red crab on main target and blue crab is still in your focus to CC as much as you please. We can continue off there to build off a Shadow Step Kidney Shot Macro, Shadow Step Cheap Shot Macro. So if I get, let's say, Shadow Dance, I can Shadow Step Cheap Shot the Crab. I can Shadow Step Kidney Shot the Crab if I want to. You can expand on this with a Shadow Step Sap, for example. You can make a lot of macros based around the focus target. So you can focus up and CC one target while having a priority focus on the main target. Last macro that I find very useful is this nifty sap macro which will look for enemy players. It will always look for enemy targets. That means if it's going to be a player, let's say with a hunter, with a pet, or a shaman with their totems, it won't cycle through totems, it won't cycle through non-player targets, it will always look for a player. This is the macro that I always use to try to get a drop on other stealthies as ferals, rogues, and even hunters in camo every time I go into my 5-5 one one duels. And I think that's about does it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Season 2 for Subtlety PvP Guide for Battle for Azeroth. Hopefully this answered some questions and at least got you guys started playing your Subtlety Rogue. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see all of you guys in another video.